All right, welcome back everyone, Bear Down. Today, I spent the morning focusing on resetting everything, just reanalyzing and refreshing, taking a clear view, because after yesterday, that was that was actually pretty wild. <laughs> Twitter went crazy, everyone went crazy. Justin Fields deleted his Instagram, rumor central here, rumor central there. Meanwhile, we really know Justin Fields isn't even on social media right now. He's keeping his head down, going to work, trying to avoid all this as his intellect and leadership style has shown. But it made me think, what is there to all of this? Like, what's the reality of the entire situation with all of everything that's going on? None of us truly know everything that's going on, but we can deduce and reason with what's been said, with what we see, with with real, not fake news, not rumors, not all the garbage that flies around, but what's real. And I've done other videos that compare Justin Fields to Caleb Williams out of college because that's all you can, can compare them on. Justin Fields has played three years in the NFL and he's improved every year. Not as much as a lot of fans would like to have had him do, but you have to take into context where the team in the rebuild has been, where this team was, and a lot of fans don't do that either. They don't take where this team was and how bad it would have been without Justin Fields recycling and regurgitating quarterbacks over and over again, where we are, what we've done to build the defense so far, how we've made a few steps for the offense, but really not done any rebuild on the offensive line, especially, or the wide receiver room, other than bringing DJ Moore in. We haven't added quality pieces. We tried with Chase Claypool. So I got thinking, let's let's relook at it again. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time on their college stuff, but here's Justin Fields, there's Caleb Williams. We'll stack them up side by side. Here's the two of them. And, you know, there's a lot of comparisons. There's a lot to contrast. They are very, very similar college quarterbacks, to be honest. Uh, a lot of the same flaws in both of them. And no, neither of them are perfect. And I'm not saying Justin Fields is perfect. But if you look at him, he is built like an NFL quarterback. And Ryan Poles and, well, Kevin Warren, more specifically, in his interview with WGN, really emphasized on how he's built like an NFL quarterback. That was important to him. He wouldn't have pointed that out if they if they weren't trying to emphasize that. Caleb Williams isn't built like an NFL quarterback the same way. Can he succeed? Yeah, others have. And a lot of others have. We can use the extreme examples like Drew Brees or Russell Wilson uh, there's, and Kyler Murray even to an extent. They've, they've found a way to have some sort of success in the NFL in, in some form or another, especially uh, Russell Wilson winning the Super Bowl with the Seahawks. Uh, but there's a lot to deduce from that. There's a lot of different opinion that you can make from that. I decided to compile everything from these two guys from their college. And so it's a lot more information than I broke down before. And I'll go through it fairly quickly. You can pause this and look at it if you want. But this is both of their last two seasons. And I did have to put in there Justin Fields. The 2020 season was half of a season. It was the COVID year. They didn't play a full season. It was half a season. So it's not a full analysis there. But if you take that, you can deduce numbers from it. You can see it was a very quality season in 2020. Uh, but look at there. And I'll just go through the lines. You can look at the numbers for yourselves. I'm not going to try to give a full deduced reasoning here because there's only so much you can take from this, but there is some stuff you can take from it. So first, <clears throat> the player, their height, weight, their adjusted completion percentage, the yards they threw, the touchdowns they threw, the interceptions they threw, the rushing yards they ran, touchdowns they ran, the fumbles that they had, and then their hand fumble grade, so how well they, they held onto the ball from PFF. That's their, their final grade. Caleb Williams' grade this year, is scary. If you want to be honest, that's a scary stat to look at. Now we can we can say things about Justin Fields and the fumbles, even, but if that's the the reason you guys have, because a lot of people hang everything on one game from the Denver Broncos where he had that fumble at the end, where the defensive end was on him in less than one second, one second, and so there was a surprise there. You can blame him all you want for that, but things happen in bad situations, and there's not a lot Justin Fields controlled there except maybe tucking that ball and not taking the, the strip sack fumble. One play doesn't define him. <laughs> but when you look at Caleb Williams in 2023, his grade was among the worst in the entire college football. Everyone. It was among the worst. That scares me. If you're talking about taking a quarterback number one overall, that scares me. 
Does it take away from the other things he does well? Well, it can take it can weigh against it, but he does do a lot of other things well. His 2022 season was special. 4,500 yards was special. 42 touchdowns to five interceptions was special. He still had some fumbles and hand ball issues there as well. But Justin Fields also has fumble issues, as you can see, from his 2019 season. He improved quite a bit coming into the NFL, and he really has done well, especially the second half of this year, and really 2023 overall, as they've asked him to improve on it. Those fumbles have come down significantly. That's something that can be coached. So give the same argument for Caleb Williams. That is something that can be coached. Coaching it from 26.9 PFF grade scares me, but it is coachable. All right, the bottom line is height, weight, NFL rating. So that's his NFL passer rating. Obviously, Justin Fields' 2019 year looked really good. Adjusted completion percentage, passing grade, run grade, overall grade, turnover-worthy plays, their pressures that turn into sacks, and their big-time throws. Very similar quarterbacks, if we're being honest. There's, there's clearly an advantage to Justin Fields if you take that across the board, other than what everyone seems to focus on is the yards. That's just dependent on the scheme and the calls. and The, it, the yards don't equate to everything. But there's the stats that are before you. I showed this before. I'll show it again. Justin Fields had his big game against Trevor Lawrence in Clemson. Balled out Miller Moss. Played for USC in their Holiday Bowl. It's not a huge deal other than when you see stuff like this. And this is other stuff that scares me. When you see character issues come out. And yes, I agree. People can talk and people can make stuff up. But when multiple things say it and then... Okay, so on the right, there's Miller Moss when they talk to him post game. I don't think it's as much about me as it is about the team. That's a good leadership thing to say. That's very Justin Fields type of thing to say. The emphasis is really to come together as a team. No ego, no individual. It's all about us as a team bonded together, and that's what we are going to focus on going forward. That keyword going forward was pounced on by everyone in the media because there was a lot of spotlight hogging, and it seemed like it got to Caleb Williams this year, and that's part of why he played so poor was he became very egocentric. That's an Adam observation. That's speculative but it seemed like that's what happened. Other players on the team made similar comments. Jacob Covington, the cornerback, said, we a team now, we a team now. The culture is back, the program is back. Back, back from what? Where did it go? Well, Caleb Williams hijacked it, according to several people. He hijacked the team, and it became all about him. That's not the culture we have in the Chicago Bears right now. You look at the team, you look at the players supporting Justin Fields. He puts his head down and he goes to work. He's a true leader. These are things I think about. I'm giving you real talk of things that I'm worried about. And then at the bottom, this is 10 days ago, you see Caleb Williams responds to criticism from former Bears running back. During this offseason, you've seen his dad get involved. You've seen him make comments. You've seen them backtrack it. They're on the Rich Eisen show. Different things come out one day. They come back the other day. Uh, Colin Howherd, Cowherd, who has a connection there, says one thing is said, and then they have to backtrack it. They have to come back. His dad is over-involved, different things. That's not an issue you have with Justin Fields. He grew up very disciplined. He is very disciplined now. And every time you look at him in front of a podium, he says, I can't worry about those things. All I can do is put my head down and go to work, and I put my trust in God. That's what he says. It's verbatim. And over and over again, that's what I like to see as my quarterback in the Chicago Bears. Other concerning things you see are about how they're nitpicking. Caleb Williams, why did he have such a bad year? Well, his line wasn't very good. His receivers weren't. Well, if that's the excuses you have for him having a bad year in college, and then you hear about the things about him performing worse against top-tier quality talent, why is that going to translate to the NFL in a team like the Bears that haven't had a good offensive line? 26 in pass block efficiency last year, consistently within the bottom five every single year. Now, yeah, we can do a lot of focus to improve that this year, and we need to get a better wide receivers. And if we're taking that view and approach, and we're taking Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams takes away from the ability to continue to improve and grow this team. This is a deep wide receiver class. 
But you take Caleb Williams and you've taken yourself out of the ability to have additional draft capital from trading down from number one. And you've taken yourself out of any consideration of Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, or Romo Dunze. All three of them will be gone before number nine. Yes, you hear the people make the comments, well, we could trade him to New England for number nine, swap for three, and we can pick up one of them then. We can... <laughs> That's additional draft capital as well that you're wasting. Then we're taking other draft capital from other places too when we're in a rebuild and we already have a quarterback that's better than, or at least you can compare him to being equal to Caleb Williams. I've talked about in other videos about the connections and cohesions between future Chicago Bears, how this team is supportive and rallying around Justin Fields. Stuff like this takes away from it. I don't care that he paints his fingernails. Yeah, I think that's weird. I think it is absolutely bizarre for a grown adult man, especially an athlete, to be painting his nails. Maybe that's chauvinistic or whatever you want to call it on my part. I'm not inclusive or whatever. But look what he's writing on his fingernails. F-U and then the full word Utah on his other hand and other such things. And he, he commented on it. Yeah, it motivates me. You can motivate and be a leader in other ways than having to do garbage like that. That's stuff that distracts from the team, stuff that elevates the ego and elevates you above everyone else. This is not the definition of head down, go to work. This is not the definition of a Chicago quarterback that leads by example and leads this team with with what he does on the field. This is distractions off the field. This is... This is more red flags to me. This is stuff I worry about. All right, so some of you have said, what if we do move on from Justin Fields 100% and it isn't an option in your mind? What do we? Do? I still don't like Caleb Williams. I, those red flags concern me. I look at someone like Jaden Daniels, and no, this is not me advocating for us to draft Jaden Daniels, and I'll show you why in a second. But there's other quarterbacks besides Caleb Williams that don't worry as much. Jaden Daniels isn't fully filled into his frame. He's six foot four, two ten. I think he absolutely needs to get into the weight room. He needs to get in with conditioning and strength. Get above that two ten. Two ten is slightly below Caleb Williams, but he's got a more height. I guess we should say height, because Caleb Williams actually has a more solid frame for the NFL. But Jaden Daniels is more scrawny. But it's not like you can't fix some of those things. But look at his stats. Look at Jaden Daniels' stats compared to the other two, and especially look at his 2023 year, his improvement from 2022. I would rather see a quarterback that improved in college and shows that he's improving every year than a quarterback that's regressing. Everything, including his runs. He's a dual-threat quarterback. His rushing, look at that both years, 12.50 and 10.79, 10 touchdowns, 3 fumbles, 11 touchdowns, 4 fumbles, and his hands efficiency grade so his ability to hold on to the ball the ball 70 and 63 so if we have to move on i would rather take Jaden daniels when we trade down and do that no when you guys talk about trading down you don't trade down maybe you do with washington that's the only difference in this scenario you don't ever trade down when you want someone because you don't know what they're going to do last year houston didn't know what Carolina was going to do. They didn't know what they were going to get second. They just had their analysis and what they wanted. Carolina had that first pick. If someone trades up, they could want Jaden Daniels. You don't trade down if you want someone. The only the only difference might be with Washington and a calculated risk. You might say, okay, well, Washington, everything lines up. Cliff Kingsbury's there. Uh, Caleb Williams is from there. It's very, very centric to them that it would probably be Caleb Williams, but you can't guarantee anything. So if you're going to take Jaden Daniels, you're going to take him at one or at worst two. And so there's the possibility you could trade down there. That's not where I'm going with this. This is not where I want to head with that. I don't want us to take anyone but Justin Fields because of the growth and the development that he has been making. I've been pointing it out in other videos, what the reality is of him. I'm not going to show the screen where he's improved every year, but you guys have seen that every year he's improved on every metric he needs to. But when you look at the important things, his poor passer rating is low. It's lower than a lot of other quarterbacks and right in line with where it should be with other quarterbacks. It's lower than uh, Lamar Jackson's. 
His pressure of any kind, though, is still super high. Can we pinpoint what the problem is? Yes, it's the offensive line and the wide receivers. Are there things Justin Fields can work on? 100%. But his adjusted completion percent is high, his poor pass is low, and his passer rating is up. He's improving every year, so it's not on him. What I would rather see us do is continue to build brick by brick, grab an offensive lineman or four, grab wide receivers or three, and continue to build this the proper way. Justin Fields' contract isn't up until 2026. The fifth-year option is not that expensive for him as a dual-threat dynamic quarterback that has been leading this team out of the problems we were in. We've literally had to ride on his back. He's carried us through this as we've rebuilt and are rebuilding the linebacker core, the secondary, the defensive line, now the offensive line starting last year, the running back room eventually, the wide receivers, everything's being rebuilt, but he has been the one we've been building around. He's carrying us through it, and we have to keep the course brick by brick. Well, what do we have coming up in 2026? I've told you guys this before. I'm going to show it here. The 2022 through 2025 quarterback class has not been special. Caleb Williams was a reach. Everyone's trying to force a quarterback to be generational because there hasn't been one. Six foot one, 215 with a re regressed year, a hard regressed year in college with those red flags on it and his hands and his fumble rate of 26.9 being one of the very worst in the college level, NCAA, being one of the very worst scares me. That does not scream generational to me. There's things we can fix in that. There's other things that are good about him. But in 2026, there is a very special class coming out. I've highlighted Nico Iamalieva in a different video that was really kind of for fun just to show this point. 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, not elite, not generational. Now, there's going to be good quarterbacks coming out in 2025. There, there's going to be a quarterback that will be an NFL quarterback. Quinn Ewers going back is only going to refine him a little bit more. Sitting behind Quinn Ewers is Arch Manning, who's learning every day and has royalty in him, NFL blood in him, where he's learning from his uncles every single day and his family and his dad too, obviously. Nico Ayameliava has already shown that the hype on these guys, I mean, these guys were one and two coming out of the high school prospects in the nation. And they're already showing that they're worth the hype. You're going to have two more years of college-level refinement working with them to help them get to that level of being generational. But they're already showing they're way ahead of where everybody else has been. You've also got other guys coming in the ranks. Malachi Nelson, who just transferred from USC to Boise State because Miller Moss is taking over that job. And... Jordan Mayava, who is the Mountain West Rookie of the Year quarterback at UNLV who helped turn their program, is transferred to USC to be his backup. Well, Malachi Nelson is going to go to Boise State to be their starter. He'll probably have a great year there and then transfer somewhere big, kind of like Jaden Daniels did, to finish his career and then be a high-ranked prospect. Dante Moore actually got a ton of starting this year, thrust into the fire situation. And you see that? It's not always going to be a hot success with these 18-year-old kids that come into college and start year one. Part of the refinement process, he's still got two more years. All three of these guys are high, high, high-rated prospects. I'm telling you, all three of, all four of them, sorry, all four of them are going to be, this is going to be a generational talent class. Well, next year is a high defensive end class. What do the Bears need? Well, next year we can grab a defensive end if uh, Justin Fields isn't panning out after the next year or two well we can go <laughs> there's four guys here that are all in my opinion in adam's opinion better than caleb williams less red flags than caleb williams the ability with look at the i mean 6'3 210 6 3, 190 still filling into his frame six foot six 210 nico ayameleava is now 210 from what they 6'4 212 pounds these are NFL quarterbacks. This is what I'm getting at. We don't have to force the agenda that Caleb Williams is the end-all, be-all. 
because we're not there in the rebuild yet either. He's going to get smashed if he comes here with this offensive line. There's no one that would survive a 60% pressure of any kind, especially with Caleb Williams' numbers in college and how he struggled against the same issues. So I'm telling you, this is what this was meant to be, was a real talk session, a form of just talking this through because I don't, I truly don't believe Caleb Williams is special. Do I think Justin Fields is there yet? No, I'm not, I'm not delusional, guys. I'm not beyond seeing that he has things to work on. But I do see that he's refining every year and he's improving every year, and I see that through metric stats and analysis. And as long as he continues to do that, there is greatness within him. Now, if he doesn't fix everything and he doesn't take us through that level after we've completed this rebuild, after we've got all the pieces around him, this team is then built up with a quality offensive line, a quality defense, a quality secondary, quality wide receivers, that we can then in 2026 take one of these guys, take Arch Manning, take Nico Ayameliava. And you might say, well, we don't, we don't have the number one pick at that point. We're obviously not that bad. Well, that's true, but look at how we're building draft capital. If we make those tradebacks this year, we could very easily have additional first-rounders in this year and 2026 and 2025. And if we do that, if we focus on and we can have multiple second-rounders, we can package that draft capital together and trade up for one of these guys that we fall in love with. Would it cost a lot to get up there? Yeah, but we've built for a reason that way. And then you can plug and play Nico Ayamayliava. You can plug and play Arch Manning. You can plug, plug and play Dante Moore. And will we be in the Super Bowl year one? No, but we've got a successful system to finally help a quarterback succeed. We haven't done it that way. We haven't built the quarterback properly. We haven't put them in a position to succeed ever. We haven't done that. We're finally building around Justin Fields. And even if he's our step-up quarterback or our temporary quarterback, we're doing it the right way by continuing to build around him. Now, I hope Justin Fields can take that step and be the quarterback that gives us multiple Lombardis. But if he isn't building around him because he is a quality quarterback in the NFL, he's a high-caliber quarterback in the NFL that's proven he can make the big-time throws and proven he can win, we can build around him and then we can replace him if he doesn't work out with this team built up properly. I really see that being the vision of Ryan Poles and Kevin Warren, too. I really see them wanting to build something sustainable. In fact, they've said as much. They've said they want to build this program brick by brick, and they warned us last year this wasn't a one-year rebuild. They warned us it wasn't a two-year rebuild. That They said this would be multiple years, and fans didn't listen. So here we are. All right, with that, hopefully you get something from this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I do like interacting with you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. Please hit the like button so they can share and get around. Share it if you'd like to. I really appreciate it. Until next time, bear down.